So the next thing we're going to look at is a result that's sometimes known as the, the p-test. So the p-test just refers to functions of the form 1 over x to the p. Okay? And we're going to look at both types of improper integral. So we'll look at an integral of the form, say, 1 to infinity, 1 over x to the p. And we can look at an integral of the form 0 to 1 of 1 over x to the p. Okay? So the sort of boundary value for both, um, for both cases is actually p is equal to 1, right? Uh, if p is equal to 1, the antiderivative for 1 over x is the natural log. Um, the natural log goes to infinity as x goes to infinity. The natural log also goes to minus infinity as x goes to 0, right? So for p is equal to 1, both types of integrals diverge, okay? Now, so we're going to assume then that p is not equal to 1 and see what else we can say. Well, if p is not equal to 1, we can do power rule integration, right? That's x to the minus p. So I get, if I take the antiderivative of x to the minus p, I get x to the minus p plus 1 over minus p plus 1, right? Or if you like, uh, 1 over 1 minus p times 1 over x to the, um, sorry, p minus 1. p minus 1, right? And I want to evaluate that. Well, okay. I'm cheating a little bit, right? Um, I'm going to write the thing that you shouldn't write. 1 to infinity. We know we really mean a limit here, right? We should be taking the limit. Um, but we think about when, when do I get a finite value here um, with, with x going to infinity, right? If p is... bigger than 1, then this is 1 over x to a positive value, and I'm going to get 1 over uh, 1 minus p times 0 minus 1, and so I just get 1 over p minus 1 for my value, and we're good, right? Um, and similarly here, right, I have the same antiderivative, so I'm going to get, in this case, I would get the, the limit as, say, a goes to 0 from the right of 1 over 1 minus p times 1 over x to the p minus 1. I'm going to evaluate from a to 1. So I get the limit as a goes from 0, goes to 0 from the right, uh, 1 over 1 minus p. And I get 1 minus 1 over a to the p minus 1. Um, now, if I want to get a value here, then I need p minus 1 to be negative so that this is actually something in the numerator, right? And then it's going to go to 0. So actually, I want p minus 1 to be negative. So I need, um, I need p to be less than 1, right? If p is less than 1, then I'm going to get 1 over 1 minus p. So the moral of the story here is that this one is going to converge. if p is bigger than 1 and it's going to diverge if p is less than or equal to 1. Whereas this one converges if p is less than 1 and it diverges if p is bigger than or equal to 1, right? So of course the one case they have in common is p equals 1. Both types diverge if p is equal to 1, but um, if we're looking at x going to infinity, then we want p to be bigger than 1. If we're looking at x going to 0, then we want p to be smaller than 1. Okay? This, this is the so-called p-test. So you remember this is sort of a, a basic kind of edge case. What do you do with 1 over a power of x? Um, next, we're going to see for other integrals how we can try to take those ones and 
compared to other ones that we know.